everyone. I stood here to speak to you about 18 months ago and in the unfamiliar territory, the relative novelty of those early days of the pandemic, I said that I was going to try something that had never been tried before, a diocesan synod in 30 minutes. I have to admit, I thought that would be a one-off. Since then, we had first one diocesan synod online and now we're looking forward to another short one in 2021 to conduct our essential business. In the days and months since, we have experienced profound and enduring change in our society. The full future consequences are still only being shaped in our midst. We are told that yet again, perhaps even as never before, we are in a precarious position. Throughout this time on your part, alongside the demands of your own lives and those of your families and communities, there have been huge sacrifices, commitment, energy and resolve, all of it to keep the work and calling of the church faithfully going. For many of you, there has been suffering, tragedy and grief. This unchartered territory has required us to press on with the patient, steady slog of focusing on our core vocation, worship, the liturgy of the church, the work of God's people, in familiar ways, but in the face of new demands and challenges. And you have applied the same resolve, innovation and flexibility to the pastoral care and work for which the Church of Ireland is so rightly known. We do not know what lies ahead. We continue to live with uncertainty at a time when we never thought this is how things would be. Many of us are dismayed, confused and indeed very anxious. So above all else, as your bishop, I want to encourage you, to salute you and to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We are a people of faith. We do not like wildernesses. But our faith gives us plenty of examples of what it is like to live in those times and places. Challenging, ghastly as they were, they were also, even for Jesus himself, times of transformation. The scriptures continually give us proclamations and affirmations of God's presence with us and journeying with us. And that should continue to give us confidence as we walk the paths of faith, hope and love as his disciples. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word, that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, you have called us through baptism to be your church in this place. Draw near to us in Cork, Klein and Ross, as we seek to renew our witness in your gospel. Enable us to hear your voice, to know your way and to do your will. So that charting a future with confidence under the guidance of your Holy Spirit, we may truly and faithfully be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In spite of all the obstacles in the past year, there have been opportunities also. Much has been happening at personal, family, community, parish and diocesan level. I find all of it inspiring and again I thank you. Let's have a look now in just five minutes at a whole year as it happened.
As the pandemic continues and the weeks and months mount up, we know that it's been especially awful for those who have been ill, not only those who have had COVID-19 or who are currently fighting it, but also those living with other medical conditions and illnesses. Most especially our hearts go out to those whose loved ones have died and who have suffered the additional trauma alongside their grief of not being able to have the funeral they would otherwise have had for their loved ones. Please pause with me now to pray for those who are ill and to remember those who have died. Hello, my name is Billy Skews and I'm the Diocesan Secretary and I'm going to give you a short synopsis of the Diocesan Council report over the last 12 months. Now I think at this stage everybody should have received the Diocesan Synod Book of Reports and the full Council report is in this book beginning at page 20. All Diocesan Council meetings were held by Zoom during the year as it was impossible to meet in person. The Bishop of Cork's Pastoral Care Fund is a charity initiated by the Bishop. It was approved by the charity regulator at the start of the year and a very successful Founders' Appeal was launched soon after. The Bishop thanked all those that supported the appeal. Full details are in the report. The diocesan website was redesigned by Liam Burke. I hope you've all had an opportunity to check out the new design. In July, Denise Bruegel was appointed as the Diocesan Media and IT Officer. We wish Denise well in this role. Fair share. Every parish paid their 2020 fair share allocation. This is another great achievement. May I thank each parish, select vestry, and in particular, each parishioner for this support. Funding ministry is expensive, but it must remain our main objective. If we look at 2021, we have one quarter remaining to be collected. However, every parish is up to date at this point. Property. At present, maintenance is being carried out on a number of our churches. St Luke's in Douglas, St Michael's in Blackrock, Holy Trinity in Frankfield. However, one of the largest maintenance works is happening in Timaleague. The Church of the Ascension has had the roof fully replaced and now extensive works takes place on the tower. I also wish to mention the Carrick Centre, Carrick Rowan Union. The centre has been finished to the highest of standards and they are now fully operational. This concludes my report. The full report can be found in the Synod book. May I wish you all well and I hope to see you soon. On behalf of Christian Aid Ireland, I'd like to thank the Diocese of Cork, Klein and Ross for all the support you've given over this year. It's been a challenging year, but your support has provided crucial aid to support the work of Christian Aid's partners in the developing world. One country which has a special relationship with this diocese is the country of Burundi. This year, we will all remember, or should remember, the wonderful fundraising walk that the Reverend Tony Murphy date in during the month of May. From the 1st of May, beginning in the far west of Doris and Bantry and Skull and ending up on the 27th of May in Yawl, the Reverend Tony walked over all of the parishes, a total of over 100 uh, kilometres and 5 kilometres in each of those parishes to raise funds for that Pacific project. And the result was 12,500 was raised by that singular fundraising activity by the Reverend Tony Murphy and the response of parishes and communities towards it. That 12,500 plus funds that were received in the diocesan office and, and, and transferred to Bishop's Peel has 
meant that there's a cumulative fund of over 70,000 euros from this diocese so over the last three years. Talking about walking, well, as you all know, every September, there should be the annual Christian Head Sheepshead Hike. And this year, like last year, it was restricted to numbers. 12 people hiked on the 4th of September. But the response was tremendous by parishes, by individuals, and by donations. Over two and a half thousand were raised on that one day towards the work of Christian Aid. So on behalf of Christian Aid, I'd like to thank you all, what you give in living the faith and the message of the gospel, empowering lives and seeing no borders, but seeing the whole humanity of God's creation and its people. With all the restrictions that have happened in a COVID pandemic world, including in this country of Ireland, your giving has changed lives and a huge, huge thank you so much. I hardly need to say that the diocesan church music scheme hasn't been operating as normal over the last year. However, both Robbie and I are now back in some schools, seven in fact, local to Cork City, and always following the requests of school principals when deciding how best to operate. My teaching in Ashton never stopped, and I was teaching lessons online when that was required earlier this year. Our most significant project was the Cathedral Choir recordings of carols for Christmas and hymns and other seasonal music for Holy Week and Easter. Feedback suggests that this was much appreciated by the clergy who were using it as part of their online services, and I hope also appreciated by those who were watching. We were pleased to be able to do something to help out musically, and especially at those important times of the year. Once again, it looks like Christmas is going to be affected by the ongoing restrictions, but we continue to hope for better news in the new year. Hi, Hilda Connolly here, the Diocesan Youth Officer, speaking to you on behalf of the Cork Diocesan Youth Council. So yes, we've had yet another mad year. Around this time last year, we had to revert back to behind the screens again, but we made the most of it. At least two, twice a week, we had youth Zooms, one was the Alpha Youth Series and the other was a Fun and Games Night. So it was a pick a mix of Zooms for the teenagers. Coming into the summer, we held a specific six class Zoom, uh, which enabled our newbies, our, our new group coming into first year last September, to be able to get comfortable with each other before being amalgamated into the wider group. Around this time last year, we were also getting ready for our youth advent service, which we didn't think we'd be able to have. But thanks to the help of Dean Peters and Reverend Cliff Jeffers, we were able to run it and we were actually able to live stream it out across the diocese as well, which was amazing. Coming into Easter, we decided to have a little bit or do a little bit of drama because we're, you know, all about drama. Uh, so we got in touch with our, with Play by Ear, who got together with us and about 30 teens and they drafted a script and we got it out there just before just during the Easter week actually and those videos are still up on the diocesan YouTube channel if you would like to have a look at them. Coming into the summer then we had a little bit more freedom so we were able to get out and about so we had a couple of um, events we went to Oyster Haven with the sixth class group which was crazy and fun brilliant day and then a few weeks later, we went kayaking. We've also do, um, gone to play foot golf in Kinsale. We've had a day trip with the young leaders, the LAT group, out to Cape Clear for a day. And we've also had, um, just recently had our Halloween event, which, which was down in the Horror Trail down in the West Cork Secret. So plenty of screams and running and, and laughter, but, but it was all good. Uh, and then coming up in the next couple of days is our annual table quiz which is the first one we are able to have in person in a while so we're really looking forward to that and again it's after coming around really quickly our youth advent service in another week or a couple of weeks so for now that's it from all of us there will be plenty more happening in the next few in the next few months uh, so keep an ear out and watch out for all our, our emails and our posts about what's coming up but for now it's time for me to say happy christmas and we'll see you all soon hello everybody it's good to be with you at this diocesan synod as we review the year and what's been happening for the environment across our diocese we are marking at this point when i'm talking to you the start of the cop 26 talks 
And what's been really important here in the diocese is that many of the parishes have been marking these talks with prayer services, with the Climate Sunday initiative, and with many different ways of incorporating care for the environment into the liturgy and into the services throughout this autumn season. And it's been really heartening to see how many places and many dioceses, how many parishes are really taking this on board. Of course, with COVID over the last year, there hasn't been much scope for practical initiatives, but it's great to see that parishes are continuing with doing some very practical things around their church environments. So we see things like uh, areas being left aside for wildlife, we see bug hotels, we see uh, trees being planted, and many other uh, great things going on in different places across the diocese. So we hopefully over the next year we'll have more time and more opportunities to coordinate these things and uh, make a real uh, difference to the environment here in Cork, Cloyne and Ross. The Mother's Union prayer includes these words. Empowered by your spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship and in love and service reach out as your hands across the world. During the pandemic we have sought to be faithful to this. We reached out to members across the diocese in different ways, whether by post, phone, email, Facebook, or via Zoom or YouTube. In order to continue to support families and individuals in need, we found new and creative ways to reach out in love and service. We received grants from the Mums in May Fund, which enabled us to support Critical, an initiative of Safe Ireland, and the new Safe House in West Cork. We used our Away From It All funds to offer a pandemic voucher scheme through the parishes and schools, which has supported 68 families in need. We also supported our hospital chaplains by providing knitted hearts and crosses for patients separated from their loved ones. Despite difficult times, members responded exceedingly generously to the Mums in May fundraising, especially supporting both our All-Ireland President June Butler and myself as we walked and met with members across the summer and autumn months. Thank you to all the clergy who supported this. The 27th of November is the Mother's Union Global Day of Action, when members focus on No More One in Three as part of the 16 Days campaign. It reminds us that one in three women will be impacted by some form of violence in their lifetime, something which is unacceptable. Can I encourage you to pray for the victims of violence and to learn more about what the World Council of Churches calls the pandemic of domestic abuse. Together we can take a stand and continue to make a difference in our world. Doing nothing is not an option. Hi, I'm Seamus Blan. I'm one of the church wardens here in St Anne's Shannon. We currently don't have a priest, so I've here to talk to you about our 300th anniversary, which we'll hopefully be able to kick off in big, typical Shandon fashion next year as we mark 300 years of worship in this beautiful building that we know was started work in 1722. We're not 100% sure on when it finished and when it opened, but if you can find that out for us, we'd be delighted. But we have a whole year, possibly more than a year of events planned up we hope that next year, public health guidance permitting that we will be able to have our usual services for events such as the Jazz Festival, for Pride, for International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, and the other services that we do up here, but to add a 300 spin to them, to show how far we've come as a community here in the city of Cork, and that we are still reaching out to those here in the city and beyond. We hope to also do, of course, special events for the 300, to have special guests, preachers, possibly lecturers, a lot of history, because 300 years, there's a lot that happened in that time. And we hope to highlight that and to really tell the story of St. Anne's Shandon in the 300 years that has been here on the north side of Cork and to tell that story. I was asked to say a few words um, on the Litchfield link, a link between our diocese the Diocese of Litchfield in England. The Litchfield link came into reality as Bishop Michael Ipgrave 
wanted a link between his diocese in Lichfield and a diocese in the EU, particularly in the wake of Brexit. He reached out to our bishop and the rest is history. Our diocesan link was further explored pre-pandemic in a meeting in the bishop's house when representatives from our diocese met with the Bishop of Lichfield, Michael Ipgrave and his wife. And this summer we held a Zoom meeting with reps from our diocese and their diocese. And we had uh, breakout sessions, which had many positive ideas, although one person wanted us to sort out the Northern Ireland Protocol, uh, but we decided it was above our pay grade. As a result of that meeting and other follow-on meetings I've had with Julia Cody, the link person in Litchfield, we have a number of ideas brewing away. Some of the ideas that are in the pipeline at the moment are youth link, perhaps an exchange or maybe a pilgrimage. The Mother's Union have been looking at links um, and hopefully something will develop from that. One of the other bishops in their diocese, Bishop Clive and uh, Julia Cody, are hoping to take a small group from Litchfield uh, to visit here uh, next spring. And the St. Finbar's Cathedral Choir are hopefully being invited to uh, sing in uh, Litchfield Cathedral. We are looking at the a pilot church school link and Abbasbury National School is going to be the guinea pig for this one. And we're hoping to get another two to three parishes linked. So if you're interested, please do contact me. COVID-19 has had an impact on so many areas of our life and it has certainly impacted the budding link with Litchfield Diocese. Please God, next year I will have more to report on and we will be able to follow through with some of the plans. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact me if you want further information. Thank you for listening. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.